the first question was about the coherence and you know um and the i i think most people got that you know sodium lamps one show uh, interference effect uh, with each other because it uh, won't be coherent and the part that uh, somewhat tricky is whether two independent lasers can interfere um i i guess if you are reading this question strictly very literally like two laser pointers that yeah two laser pointers want interfere you won't see stable interference pattern from two laser pointers and that's mainly because the laser uh, i don't have any laser pointers at hand handy um laser pointers that we normally use they are diode lasers they are very low quality they are don't have a very narrow transition so it's a very um unideal laser so I find uh, for questions like this, it's more meaningful to answer a question for an ideal scenario because uh, it's like a, with a, you know physics of 4A and friction. In a lot of questions, we try to ignore friction because you can um, analyze the question in a more meaningful way when you consider the ideal scenario, ignoring friction. And then after you have worked it out, then maybe reintroduce the friction if you need to. So I want you to address uh, what is possible with ideal lasers. And this is uh, frankly a topic that's near and dear to my heart. In my former life, I was doing research in AMO physics and a lot of what you do in AMO, atomic molecular and optical physics, you um, work with the lasers. And, um, and I guess um, <laughs> I'm trying to do this in like two, three minutes. Um, what people, experimentalists working in AMO field uh, occupy a lot of time, their time with is stabilizing the laser that you work with. Sometimes you are probing a particular atomic transition and uh, you need to do it with the two separate lasers and they have to be related to each other in a very precise way. So, um, so I'm just gonna Google search some terms. One of uh, the, things that you have to do is something called the frequency locking or frequency stabilizing uh, lasers. So frequency locking lasers um, or laser frequency stabilizer. You put is one of the big vendors for lasers, and they actually have a fairly good set of articles on uh, AMO topics. So, um, so when you're doing laser stabilization, uh, this is more of a control theory stuff. And um, yeah, this is really not written in a, a comprehensible way. So let me take my own advice and instead uh, search up on something called the Fabry uh, Peril, which is an um, optical interference device that uh, we used to um, use as a reference to um, to stabilize um, major frequency waves. So this is an example of an interference of pattern that you might produce. It kind of looks like a Newton's rings, <laughs> and in some sense it is. It is. Um, and um, this interference pattern can be used to stabilize an optical cavity uh, to uh, mirrors that um, uh, bounce laser light back and forth. So. Um, so you use this to stabilize the cavity actively and um, and using that stabilized cavity, you can then measure the frequency of another laser very precisely. And many of the lasers that's used in research um, are tunable. So you can, um, you can change some of the param operating parameters of the laser to tune the laser to a particular frequency. And one, device that, uh, um, that uh, used uh, in state-of-the-art um, uh, laboratories is a device called optical frequency comb. It can be, so yeah, so, <laughs> yeah trying not to go too much into the uh, rabbit hole here. So using something called a frequency comb, you can um, stabilize, is there a, there is a um, figure that it describes, um, wonder if a uh, kilohertz. Um, 
so yeah I, I think I might have to leave it up uh, leave it up to people who are interested to read up on this on your own and a kind of summary of this would be there is a technique that can be used to, to uh, stabilize a laser frequency to a degree that two entirely independent lasers are related to each other very closely. They have hold very stable um, frequency and phase relationship. And uh, those two lasers that have been locked to each other can, uh, interf can produce a stable interference pattern with each other. So, so, um, so that's the kind of the long answer to, um, can you produce interference pattern using two, not laser pointers, but two laser sources. Uh, with the sodium lamps, it doesn't matter how ideal the sodium lamps are. Do two ideal sodium lamps will never be coherent with each other. And in fact, that's uh, expressed in the inherent width of the sodium uh, transition, um, th this, uh, you know, whatever the width of this transition actually is, 0.1 nanometers. That's actually pretty broad in the uh, optical terms. And um, with the lasers, two ideal lasers that, you know, used in state-of-the-art research lab, um, with a lot of effort taken to stabilize them against each other using various techniques, um, they, they can have, um, they can be coherent with each other, even though they are two independent sources. So, um, 